Okay, so today we are going to talk about uh, two concepts. One is so-called short circuit diffusion. Short circuit, which means diffusion along certain defect side. Short circuit, which means it's short, fast. Okay. The other concept is so-called the reaction diffusion. Okay. Let's first look at uh, short circuit. But uh, the first one is short circuit diffusion along well, green boundaries. So far, we have treated our material, the host material, as kind of uniform, completely uniform, right? But in reality, in most cases, we are dealing with single crystal or polycrystalline material. Most cases, polycrystalline material for most metals, most ceramics. We are dealing with, other than for special semiconductor application, we are dealing with polycrystalline material. And naturally, you would find, as what we illustrated here roughly, greens, poly, different greens. And between greens, there would be so called green boundaries. Okay? And uh, for simplicity, of course, you can imagine the diffusion coefficient, the dB for diffusion coefficient at so-called boundary, specifically in this case, green boundaries. Depends on, follow a similar quote-unquote exponentially with respect to temperature. dB0 is still the so-called frequency factor of pre-exponential term. QB would be, if we do the analogy as what we did before, the so-called uh, activation energy right for the diffusion but uh, for sub b means it's along the so-called boundary green boundary okay over d rt similarly we can write the diffusion coefficient for ds as means surface diffusion may also happen along the surface of a material and we can assume similarly it's a thermally activated process following similar Arrhenius equation okay and of course as what we show here from one material into the two material the things would glow grow flow across the initial boundary into the lattice but also along the boundary right okay and uh, now let's consider this a little bit. We want to get a relationship between the lattice diffusion, assuming everything kind of uniform homogeneous within the uh, crystal and the green boundary. Okay. So generally, what people find is ds surface diffusion coefficient greater than dB than green boundary diffusion coefficient greater than dL for lattice, within the lattice. Does that make sense? Kind of makes sense, right? Uh, within the lattice, for atoms to move, the atoms are packed closer. It is for one atom to move, it's more difficult. The boundary, okay, green boundary typically, as we'll talk about this a little bit later, the atoms are packed slightly less dense. And because it's packed less dense, it's slightly easier for atoms to move by diffusion. And on the surface, only one side is bonded, the other side is free. The diffusion coefficient would be higher, much, much higher. Okay? And uh, let's take a look example of a so-called steady state diffusion through a thin polycrystalline film. Thin polycrystalline film. I'm giving an illustration. This would be a polycrystalline. I'm only drawing one green with a neighboring green boundary. One green with a neighboring green boundary. And uh, for simplicity, let's assume the flux are perpendicular to the film surface. The film goes up and down. The flux goes from left to right, perpendicular to the film. Make sense? 
And then let's just uh, for simplicity assume all the greens are same size, all the green boundary are same size. And uh, the average green dimension, for simplicity, just say the green thickness, D. The average green boundary thickness, delta. For simplicity, okay. Let's just for simplicity assume every green is the same, every green boundary is the same, they stack up in the ordered fashion. Okay, the flux is perpendicular to the same film that we are dealing with. And polycrystalline, so we have green and we have green boundary, and each of them have certain dimension. Okay, so this is what we said green boundary perpendicular to our film of to our sheet makes sense green boundary is perpendicular to the sheet and uh, also for simplicity assume the concentration gradient concentration gradient within the green or within the lattice is the same as the concentration gradient uh, across the boundary on both sides right that's for simplicity. We can draw this concentration gradient. X goes this way across the thickness. We are talking about diffusion through the film, through a film. And this is the side view for the film. Okay. Now let's con consider this. The flux, the total flux through the lattice. The total flux through the lattice. We write still fix first law j4 flux subscript l4 lattice okay the flux through the lattice we can write as minus dl dc over dx the diffusion coefficient times concentration gradient with the negative sign in front that's our so-called fix first law but we are only dealing with lattice portion and similarly, we can assume the flux through the green boundary follows similar equation. Okay, JB for flux through or along B for boundary, green boundary, minus it equals minus DB diffusion coefficient along green boundary times the concentration gradient. And for simplicity, remember we we said okay the concentration gradient across the green is the same as along the green boundary right so we can have the same dc over dx here and here we are since we are only dealing diffusion along one dimension right across the thickness i'm only writing the derivative right not a partial differential make sense okay as we said, if the green size is D, the thickness for each of the green is D, and if the green boundary has the effective thickness of delta, remember we made certain assumptions about each of the green looks the same, dimension of D, each of the green boundary the same, dimension of delta, okay, and uh, typically delta is much smaller than the the green boundary, a uh, green dimension. Okay, so the total flux, total flux across this same film would be, I write it in this way, J for total flux would be D plus delta. That gives you the total kind of, if you look from total area for the green plus green boundary. That's the denominator, your total area, and the numerator has two contribution. JL, the flux through lattice, times D, the proportion of the lattice, or the width of the lattice, plus JB, flux through the green boundary, times the thickness of the boundary. Of course, I, I'm making a great assumption, simplification here. I assume this green mild polycrystalline is periodic. It repeats one green, green boundary, one green, a green boundary, and everything it looks the same. 
and now the proportion would hold, right? The ratio between d and delta is all the throughout the same. That's why we can make this simplification. The denominator kind of represents your total thickness or total area. The numerator is two part, some part through the lattice, some part through the boundary, and they follow certain geometric ratio. And then I did one approximation. We said, okay, look at the denominator. Delta is much, much smaller than D. Green boundary thickness is much smaller than green dimension. So I would use a approximate sign and drop the data. Make sense? A big number divided by 10,000 versus 10,000 plus one. That's probably end up with the same number, right? And then I'm going to rewrite one more step. I put the one over D in the front, and then I'm going to replace JL by fixed first law, right? JL is DL times concentration gradient, and don't forget I have a D here. The second term, JB data, JB data, JB from fixed first law, and don't forget data. Okay, so that's what we write. And then rearrange total J, total flux would be I put DC over DX, DC over DX outside of the bracket, right? And uh, this D and this D would, uh, this D and this D would. Uh, Cancel, right? I this minus sign, this minus sign, I put it in the front. I inside I have D1, sorry, DL left, and this D and this data I combine. Data over D times DB, right? So we are gonna lump this together and still get something like this. The total flux would uh, be equal to bracket times concentration gradient with a negative sign. And if we diff for diffusion through this so-called polycrystalline film for this highly simplified scenario, we if we introduce the so-called apparent diffusion coefficient, the APP for apparent diffusion coefficient, it's just uh, lump these together, right? Lump these together apparent diffusion coefficient for this whole polycrystalline non-uniform structure would be the lattice term plus what the contribution from green boundary but not the direct addition of the green boundary diffusion coefficient it has to be modulated by the proportion of green boundary which is just the delta over d Typically, delta over D is a big number or small number, much larger than one or much smaller than one. Much smaller than one. So that's why I cannot add the whole green boundary coefficient. I have to add it, but modulated by the proportion of green boundary, which is the proportion. It's just the thickness ratio. For this highly idealized situation, assuming every green, same size, every green boundary, same size, aligned up, periodical fashion, which is not too bad in approximation. Make sense? Okay, you s this is what we you want you to learn. Okay, people build models by making assumptions, and these assumptions simplify them a lot, but are not too bad. Make sense?